Now that we have the connection to the database established, let's go ahead and create a file that will be able to view the records that are in the database. So I'm going to create a new file. I'm going to call it view.php and I'm going to start out by just filling it with the standard HTML head and body tags. I'm going to put the title at uh, view records and in the body section Again, I'm going to add view records. Okay, and then underneath this h1, let's open up some PHP tags. And the first thing we want to do here is we want to include the connect DB file that we just created. So include. that's going to include the connection to the database and now secondly we want to run a query so that we can access the database and return the records that we need so that's done like this so result equals mysql i query now within this section is the query itself so we're going to do select star from players header by ID so this is going to select all the columns from the players table and order them by the ID value so if we briefly go back here excuse me so it's going to return this and it'll be ordered by ID 1 will be first 5 will be last Okay, so we have this select statement. Um, we're going to want to put it in, within an if statement. Like so. Um, this will return true if the query is fine or false if there's some sort of issue. So down here I'm going to echo error and I'm going to ask to display the SQL I error message. Okay, so that's in place. So we have a connection to the database, we have the query, and we have an error statement if for some reason it doesn't work. And the final thing we want to do down here is we want to close the connection. And that's done with the close function. Okay, so open, query, close. Now within this section we want to actually make sure that we have results to display and then if so we need to display them. So that's going to be done with if So we're going to check if the number of row that excuse me the number of rows that our query returned is larger than 0. If so we're going to display them. Otherwise, we'll display a um, message. It's going to say no results to display. Okay. And then finally, within this section, we want to actually display the data that we've pulled from the database. So, in that case, I want to display this data in a table. And I'm going to want to start out by echoing table tag and within this we're going to do some basic styling I'm going to add border equals one and so that'll give us a little bit of basic styling and we're going to close out the table tag and now within this we want to set up some headers so open the table row and start a table header. Um, within this first header we want the ID value. Within the second header we're going to want the first name. And finally in the third header we want the last name. Um, and then we want to close out that row. Okay, so that's set. And now within this section we want to display the results that we got from the database. 
So we're going to do a while loop. And while row equals the result. Now each time this while loop loops, it's going to set up this row value, uh, row variable, excuse me, and we're going to echo out table row. And close out the table. And then we're going to echo out a couple tata table data cells. Um, this is going to include the data that we got from the database. We want it to include the ID. So that's going to be done with row ID. And then we close out that table data cell. And then basically, it's a matter of just copying this line and pasting it two more times. Um, so first one we got the ID, then we want to get the first name, and finally the last name. Let me save this and let's preview. Um, with line 32. Okay, so that should fix it. Okay, um, one thing I wanted to point out, I have gotten this issue before um, it's an error message. It says no index used. And I did a little bit of research on it, and it seems like it isn't that big of a deal. Um, you can disable that message simply instead of reporting all errors, you just report um, error specifically. There we go. Okay, so let's open this up one more time. There we go. So we have the ID table header, the first name, and the last name, and all of the data from our database is stored below. So just in case, let me go back over this one more time. So we connect to the database, and then we go ahead and run our query. So we select all data from the database, and we order it by ID. And if we have results to display, we're going to go ahead and display them. And we display them in a while loop, and each time this loop it represents one row in the database and we grab the ID, and the first name, and the last name and display them on the page. If there aren't any results to display, we display a message. Or if the query is there's something wrong with it somehow, we display an error message. So that's the basics of this. Um, let's do a couple more tweaks in preparation for the second part of this tutorial. Um, first of all, I'm going to want to add two additional table headers. Here. Um, that's because we want to add a couple links. We want to be able to edit and delete um, these records from the database. So I'm going to go ahead and paste these two more times. Um, so we're going to start and we're going to set up a link and we want this link to go to the edit page. Um, so we're going to call our records at PHP and we're going to pass an ID value so that when we visit this page PHP knows what record we want to edit. So records.php id equals and then we want to get the id and then we'll close off this a tag and put edit. Um, and then pretty similarly we want to start off here. Um, this is going to be delete. So delete.php id equals ID and then close out the link. Delete. Okay, so that set up our table. And then the final thing I want to do is down here after we finish our PHP stuff, let's also add a link. And we're going to add a link to records.php and this is going to add a new record. Okay, so let's go ahead and preview this. And you'll notice now we have edit and delete links. Um, if you check down here at the bottom, you'll notice that the edit and delete links have an ID associated with them. This is ID of one, ID of two, etc., and that matches this ID. Um, and then we also have a link to add new records if we need to. Okay, so that's the end of this part of the tu tutorial. Please follow along. I'll be doing a second part 
discussing how to make this edit, delete, and create new record functionality actually work.